Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Proxmox 7.1, not to put up virtual machines, but to put up containers right after this. Containers are a little bit different as I, I have made a video on containers in the past. Proxmox does not directly support Docker, although Serve the Home put together a video, I think it was last year, on how to install Docker under the covers and you then use Portainer to manage it uh, on inside of the uh, uh, Proxmox framework. But that's it's not specifically on the menu. The menu for CT up here, this this thing, that's actually referring to LexC containers, LXC or LexC. I did a video on LexC a while back. I actually did a couple of them. So I'll put some links. Well, actually, I'll put some cards up there for you so you can see those. Um, the, the first thing that we want to do if we want to build a container under Proxmox is that we're going to need to have a template or we're going to need to install a, a template. So one of the two has to happen here. So actually they have a number of them built in. So I'm going to go down here to my local storage and bring that up. And you'll notice that this is configured to be able to handle backups, ISO images, which would be the ones that you've seen me do to uh, build out virtual machines and then CT templates a little bit different. Typically, these are a lot lighter weight, but, you know, they do have some concerns because the host operating system is the main OS. You don't have the separation that you do with a virtual machine, but that's okay. There's a, there's a trade-off in speed and, and the lightweightness of uh, the Lexi over a normal VM. So today we're going to take a look at that. So I'm going to install, this is the latest Debian 11. This is 11.3-1. This came out mm, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, this particular version is a patch, so that probably came out, you know, a week ago. But uh, we're going to grab that. This won't take too long. All these are is a dump of the file system. It's just a tarball. Uh, it's just one big tar of the file system. Okay, so we've got that. The task is okay. So we'll move on to the next step. The next step that we want to do is I can either create the CT here or I can go here and click the blue button. So we'll do that. You'll notice the first thing is that the the menu items on here are quite different from the virtual machines. So we have, we do have the same node and we have an ID, but this is referring to it as a container ID, even though it doesn't number them, Proxmox does not number them separately from the way that the virtual machines are. So if you have a 111, your next one's going to be 112. And if you have a virtual machine 113, your next CT would be 14. So that's kind of how it works. So I have to give this a name. So we'll call this Deb Test CT. And I don't have a resource pool built. Um, I, I detached my cluster temporarily and haven't put it back on when I upgraded it. The next step here is, so this will be the password for the root user, which is the only account that you'll have on the system. Now, this doesn't really make a lot of sense out here because by default on this particular template, Debian has the root user disabled. So you won't be able to SSH into the boxes root anyway. So this doesn't do you much good. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to pick up the template that we just downloaded from local. So we'll pick that up and then we'll need to configure a disk. Now this this is probably enough room. Eight gig is probably plenty, um, but let's put in twelve, just just cause we can. And then one CPU is fine, but I think I'm going to do two. And then memory, yeah, that's probably going to be a little light. Although the amount of memory this uses is quite low, so I can put in this much, and <laughs> this will be way too much for this. The um, the one thing that I will tell you before we configure the ethernet is that when you're looking for a, a container, you can build that yourself, but just remember that 
the containers under Proxmox do not have the ability to display, at least I haven't seen them yet do that, have the ability to just display the GUI. So they are text-based. And, uh, and today we'll see that this will have some issues with this one, but we can get around that by using the console TTY. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force it to use the DHCP today. I could give it a static address, but uh, my DNS I've converted over to DNSSEC, so I would have to create a signed, uh, a signed uh, 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 domain name for this, and I, I just haven't done that. So we'll just use DHCP for now. It'll be fine. The, it does pass the DNS domain names uh, domain correctly, so it'll pick up everything that it needs. And then just a confirmation here as to what you can do. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit finish. And it'll build it out. This will, as it's, it does not take long. I did not stop the video to do this. So, yeah, it does not take long to do it. So it'll show up right here. Uh, but the thing is that we're going to need to do here is we look at options for this particular container. As you'll notice, console mode is set to TTY. Well, we don't, that's not going to work for us. So we need to edit that. I'm going to make this console. The, the reason is, is that if I bring this up, I just get a black screen <laughs> because it's not really initializing anything on that. It's not starting up a Getty for that. Um, so the console, it will. So we can go ahead and start this. And then I can go ahead and start my console connection here. We'll log in as root. And the first thing that I will do is we're going to do an update just to make sure. And you can do that with, with these containers. So it's going to, it, the Lexi is a little bit different than Docker in that you can create different kinds of containers. And if you watch the video I did on Lexi, you'll, you'll see all the capabilities that it has over Docker. Let's, uh, let's do this. I'm going to have to add a user to be able to use SSH to get in. Okay, so I can exit out of that now. I had that IP address earlier, so and we'll try it again. There we go. Okay, so we're on dead test. Um, let me get rid of some of this junk. There is no sudo. See, I would have to install that and set it up. But I can escalate this way. <laughs> okay, so glances is not there, but that's all right. The rest of it should be. So what can you use a container for? So you can run services on this. You can put a web server up. You could put a DNS server on. Uh, you could, uh, if you set up enough drives, uh, that you could actually attach this to a store and be able to do file sharing with it. Uh, there's a number of applications that you could put on here. You, uh, there, uh, yeah, so it's up to you whatever you want to do with it. So the first thing I want to do is reboot this puppy. And I hope it's not, yeah, old habits are hard to break. So I hope it's not going to put me through the long five minute wait again. Yes, it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something. Let me shut this down for a second. 
since it keeps wanting to do that, I'm going to see if I can, let me take a look at my network. I'm going to turn that off. Let's just see if that does that. Let's see. Yep, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that problem is uh, is not is not is is me. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a uh, I don't have a uh, an IPv6 uh, DHCP P server up and running. So, all right. So I'm going to uh, let me let me uh, let me just get rid of that. We don't need to be looking at that. That's too bright anyway. So let's see. Let's go out here. There we go. All right. So since we've rebooted, we can take a look and see how much memory this is actually taken. As you can see, this is really lightweight, 29.2 meg. Uh, 21 tasks, five threads. We don't have um, a lot running. And also, I mean, I can, I think, almost get it on one page if I do. Yeah, <laughs> there's not much running. Uh, so that is one of your advantages to, uh, to being able to run this under containers is that it doesn't call in all that overhead that you normally would have because your host operating system is providing all of that. So let's see, how much disk space are we actually occupying? Or now I put some stuff out here, so it's about 789 meg, but still, that's, <laughs> that's not a lot, not today anyway. Um, let's see, the other thing is, let's take a look and see how many packages are actually installed. 328, yeah, normally we have what, about 1,500 <laughs> to 2,000 packages. And you'll see that I am on 5.13. What else do we want to do here? Uh, we've looked at the amount of space. We've looked at memory. Let's see. Let's go out here and see just, <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, we don't need that. We need SU. I have to be root. Okay. And we'll do a get clone. Keyboard is a little bit funky. I don't use this laptop a lot unless I'm in here with you guys. Um, so I think it picks up some dust or whatever. All right, so let's go into Linus. Oh, one thing, one thing, let's check root before we do this. I saw a postfix get installed. So one of the things that I know just from running Linus so many times is that this SMT banner, uh, it is releasing the mail server name and the, the the type of the distro that I'm running. So it will complain about this. So I just do this. I just remove that and then save it. And that complaint should go away. That will show up as a warning. Yeah, that will show up as a warning. All right, let's, I'll speed through this on the video so you guys don't have to watch this. This takes a, about a minute and a half or so. Just depends on how much junk is on the system. I don't suspect, yeah, it didn't take long at all. I didn't even have to do anything. So yeah, we got a 63 and this is all the same crap that we always hit <laughs> with it. Uh, yeah, but, but I, I would have had a warning here if I had left that problem with the but if you're wanting to learn uh, more about Lexi, one thing I did not talk about is that there is a flag when you're creating these containers as to whether to make them privileged or unprivileged. The first thought that you you may have is, oh, I, maybe I need this to be privileged. No, no. When you're when you're running containers, you don't want root access. That I mean, that's the whole purpose is that you're trying to break off from that so that someone cannot gain root on the host operating system. So you're trying to protect 
the Proxmox version of Debian that is running and running all the all of the uh, software that supports the uh, Proxmox uh, system. So you actually want unprivileged container as a user as the preferred. They will tell you, I think they'll see, they'll, I think they'll say here that, yeah, it's really not a good idea to do privileged. And I would agree, it's not a good idea to do privileged. Um, I don't know if... Um, Yeah, here's another here's another bad thing to do. I remember I remember a story one time where I was installing a piece of software, and it was designed to be installed as root because you could not if you installed it as a user ID, and that would be the normal way I would normally do things is I would create a user ID and I would install the services under that user ID. But in the, the software, for some reason, decided to take over some of the responsibilities of the kernel. And so they had a lot of things in it that were using Fuse and bringing things out. And so they required uh, root level access in order to be able to communicate those changes back to the kernel. So, yeah, it, it would fail. And I remember I remember one of the system admins from the customer, he, he comes up to me and he goes, Oh, I see you're running his route. Good job. <laughs> and he just walked away laughing. And I said, I, I tried it, you know, tried to mind what, the way I normally do things and the way you wanted them. Sorry, they won't install. I, I'm, uh, so I went back and I talked to the developers and of the software and they said, oh, you can turn that off now because it only needs to be root while it does the install. So we went back and just just did a, a chamad down the entire directory tree. That basically is... Uh, that, that, sorry, it wasn't more complicated than it than it was. I've been uh, I, I've been trying to look for something easy to do. I've been working on DNSSEC. I've been working on um, setting up additional security features and um, getting through the NAT in order to be able to make the validation work with DNSSEC on an internal. Uh, in inter well, it's it's an externally provided uh, DNS name. However. The chain breaks because it gets to my firewall, and my firewall says, eh, eh, "Nope, sorry, you can't come in, can't play. We're not going to play with you." And um, so, yeah, I've been trying to work through some of those headaches. I don't know why this has to be so hard. Uh, yeah, there's there's many easier ways to do things, and it seems like whenever there are two choices, if you turn left, you get a free million dollar gift card, and if you turn right, you fall off a cliff. Every time in IET, everybody turns right. It's just that's the way it is. I, I mean, I know it's cynical, but it's true. I mean, if, they, if there was an easy, more more pleasant way to do things, no, 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 no. We can't do that. No, no. We have to do this other way where you have to go through 18 job steps in order to make it work. And, and nine of them are duplicates of the last 18 so that just to make sure that you're doing things right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and bye for now. <music>